Hey friends, welcome back. Uh, today I'm doing a vlog about making OS dev work for me as a hobby because I had kind of a breakthrough recently and I wanted just to share that. Basically, just to jump to the end, the breakthrough is just to, is to not try to start from scratch and rather just use existing OS projects um, because at least for me, I was really overestimating the value of starting from scratch and I was really underestimating um, how much of my personal kind of desires can be fulfilled just by starting with an existing project actually um, but i'm getting ahead of myself but actually i've had a lot of success with this i've had a lot of fun just in the last couple of days playing around with xv6 and doing stuff and it's actually been an enjoyable experience and um, i feel like i'm making progress within just little increments um, but i'm getting ahead of myself Basically, to go back to the start, I mean, I've been interested in OS dev for a very long time, um, basically kind of going back to, to when I started doing computers. But a big source of imposter syndrome for me is that I've never actually done a significant amount of like really like a low level OS development. And even though I've written, I write blog posts about the Linux kernel and whatever, I talk about this a lot. but. But I've never done this. Uh, I've done a small amount of Linux kernel development here and there um, through work and, and personally, but really it's it's not like a lot. I mostly just read the kernel. Um, and so, I, yeah, I would love to actually do OS dev, but in truth, it's like really time consuming. And I, my hat is off to anybody that has actually been able to do a significant OS dev project and make that work with their life. Um, I've always just found this like super challenging and I suspect there's a lot of other people in my shoes where they, they have a job, they have other stuff going on. They just don't have the time like to be writing an OS in their free time. And yeah, that's just kind of where my idea comes in. And it's a very basic idea, but my assumption previously was that I needed to start from absolute scratch, like write my own boot assembly that like really just starts from real mode and bootstraps up to the kernel or whatever um or, or or at least just start from plain files empty files and kind of work my way up and i just assumed i would needed to do that um but for some reason i just had this idea that wait, like wait why am i assuming this what is the problem with just downloading one of the existing, one of the many existing OS projects and just like trying to hack on it a little bit um, because the, the, thing, the thing is whole, already set up. Boot code is already there. The build system is already there. There's, there's all sorts of infrastructure and why not reuse that and just have fun with it and save yourself the many, many hours of yak shaving and probably looking at tons of blog posts about this and debugging weird things with x86 or whatever. So that's that's kind of just all I want to say. I feel like in case you've thought similar things as me, I've just found a lot of um, benefit and value in just like not starting from scratch basically. Um, and let me try to, let me, let me pull my terminal over and try to uh, demo something. Oh man, um, okay. Terminal is coming over here. My very skinny terminal. Um, yeah, I mean, kind of ignore this stuff, but basically, yeah, I'm starting with this operating system called XV6. This is a learning operating system from MIT. It was used in like their OS courses. I never took an OS course, really. I, I took a, a undergraduate kind of systems course, but it, it wasn't really about OS development. So I never took one of these courses myself, but um, the resources are available from MIT. And this, uh, this OS is actually deprecated because they have moved on to RISC-V for their OS class. But I figured I, I already know x86 decently well. And just adding, like learning RISC-V would be another 
reason why this project is hard basically for me and so i just wanted to simplify that's kind of the main goal of like everything here i want to do os development for fun but i want to maximize my chance of having a good time with this basically by removing as much complexity as possible so removing starting from scratch sticking to architectures that i already know not trying to do this in like rust or something like that which i don't know you know sticking to things i know like c x86 is basic stuff um and i I'll, let me just like demo this i just have this very basic setup um where i can i can run it and you know i haven't i haven't done that much but you know, I've hacked it. I've added my little hello message to the init system or the init program. And now it's customized for me. Um, that's kind of what I've done. Um, what else have I done? So yeah, this is, this is my patch for doing that. Um, all right. So this is where th that was the last commit from upstream. And now this is my stuff and I'm just disabling some GCC errors to get it to build. I am printing out my thing. I added a syscall, which I just kind of followed um, some instructions to do. Um, and I added C++ support to user space, which I'm really excited about. It wasn't that hard, but um, there wasn't a way to build C++ binaries and run them inside the OS. And, and I added it. And all I needed to do it was basically just the build system, but I just needed to make sure the proper variables were available. And I don't know if I did this really right. The build system defines all sorts of flags for C flags. I literally just like copy and pasted these two C flags lines and and set them to CXX. Oh wow, I even have a typo there. Apparently it doesn't matter. That, that's not doing anything, um, but I added this one thing to use C++ 17. And then I added a little program that's just like ultra basic. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, just, it's, it only uses the C++ core library features. And so it doesn't, um, like it doesn't use the, the standard library. It doesn't use exceptions. It doesn't use runtime type information. It doesn't allocate memory via new. It is like ultra basic. It's just making a struct that has a, a member function and then calling that. Um, and then I just added it to the build system and we can just, um, where is it? Then we, we can just try to run it. I think it's called test CPP and it ran. It's, it's running hello from object dot hello. Um, yeah. And honestly, I haven't done like too much else. What a, then I did this dumb little commit where I'm just trying to support um, angle brackets. Um, so honestly, yeah, that's all I've done. But I've had a good time doing this. Um, hey, where, where am I? Um, I was able to just get some basic Quemu going. Um, they had that all rigged up basically. And so it's kind of cool. I actually kind of don't really know what to do, but if I can break start and then continue. And then now if I just drag this thing here. Like, I feel like, I, yeah, I'm like stepping through somewhere. I honestly don't really know what's going on, but now we're in main. Um, and the whole kernel is, is compiled with the debug info and stuff like that. So I can do this nicely and I can just uh, step 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 through it basically kind of st step um into it i could probably even print out some print out some variables and that like works pretty well actually um so i'm just having fun i'm really just having fun with this it's kind of scratching the itch i kind of had just like kind of do a bit of this stuff and i'm excited to go deeper and just learn about it but that's just what i wanted to share you know i i, I found a way that makes that that makes OS development work for me, basically. And um, we'll see if I keep going with it. I mean, I hope I do. Um, but yeah, my next step would be to get uh, C++ running in the kernel somehow. I don't know how to do that, but that that's what I find the most interesting as the next step for my personal interests. It's, it's not like adding more syscalls. It's not 
it's not adding more virtual memory features or a fancier init system or more drivers at the moment. The, the kernel C++ thing is just my personal thing that I'm, you know, that's, that's the shiny thing that I want to do. And that's what I'm going to do. And I have all this infrastructure to do that. And so, um, yeah, that's just what I wanted to share. Thanks for listening and I'll catch you next time.